Hey, everybody. Can you hear me? Yes, testing, testing. You know, Diane. Hi. Is that to say that I am being heard? Yes, I see Andre. Okay, great. Yes. Well, thanks for everybody for stopping by today. I'm really pleased that uh, people want to learn how to do this because we really need the help. It's really hard to uh, take vacation time or call in sick or all kinds of things because we just don't have backup. So this is great and it's just wonderful to have new blood in the ranks. So what I'm going to do today is give you a little tour and some demonstrations. And I sent out a document, a companion document, and we can follow along and make notes and the document will get more and more filled out as time goes on, but at least you'll get started today. So let's take a look at the control room. Excuse me, Bill, when did you send the document? Uh, earlier this morning. Okay, I didn't see that yet, but I will go look again. I sent it to the email. Were you able to find it? Diane, I just forwarded another copy of it to you. Oh, Stina. <laughs> Now you've got all kinds of copies of it, Diane. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Jessica. So. This is the switcher. Maybe I can give it some more light. When I do a close-up of the actual buttons, I have to f-stop it way down because they're so bright. So there's the switcher. And this is the ATEM software control by Blackmagic Design. I mean the preview monitor. So you've got the program preview, all the different cameras. Uh, we've got uh, the input from the podium computer, and we can go take a close up of all those. Jane is uh, nice enough to be a model for us. This is a preview. Camera one. Camera one, of course, looks at the podium. Camera two looks back at the back of the the, the uh, classroom that we joystick we can control. I'll give you a demo of that. Of course, I was in the shot as well, but oh well. Then camera three is the overhead. And then I have uh, some old PowerPoint from John Slinker just for a demo, and that's coming from the class PC. As I mentioned, that's called the multi-view screen on a big monitor. And we control some of that with the Mac. And this is a software software. These are called JPEGs. So that's the file extension .jpg. That's the only thing it recognizes. So when we make up slates, we make them in PowerPoint, but then we have to export them to the desktop as JPEGs, and then we can use them. We also have backgrounds. Jane has picked out some nice ones here. And we'll get to that in a moment, on how we use all those. But for now, let's go take a look, a close-up of the switcher itself.
Okay. If you follow along with the documentation, it has, <coughs> excuse me, we have three buses. This is the, the preview bus, the program bus, and then the, the key bus. That it's not labeled, but that's what it is. So what is a bus? It's really just a collection of video inputs. So th what the switcher does is like a matrix. We can uh, combine a number of different inputs, and that's what allows us to do the chroma key, which is 99% of what we do. So let's see. They each light up when you punch it. And let's take a look at what the result is. Preview is where we do most of our work. Um, three. Okay, so the first one is black. That's a legitimate color. Camera one. Camera two. Document temp camera, we often called it just camera three. Control room Mac is there. Class PC. Uh, it's the aux video. I really don't know what that is. We don't use it. Media player. We use this for backgrounds and slates. Color one, usually we just leave it at a blue, but you could, we'd rather you didn't because people expect it to be blue, but it could be changed to anything. And then color bars. Now, all three buses have the exact same inputs. So it's a lot of buttons, but it's just a lot of re repetition. Now there's one shot here I'd like to give you while we're looking at it, because we... When you come into the control room, you don't necessarily know who, how the, what the board was left. So it, it's helpful to be able to go to some known state and what I'm suggesting is that you'll have these two, which is the control Mac on both the preview and the program bus. Do that. And then you've got camera one up here. And then the other two are these two right here, the background and key. If you have all those buttons pushed, then you know you can start working with a preview. Now let's go back to I've deliberately skewed preview so that we can start working with that chroma key. Chroma key is nothing more than virtual background, and you've all been working with that in in Zoom. It's a lot of fun to play with, but uh, it just isn't good enough for broadcast. So we have to adjust it to get some nice clean edges. Wrong, we need chroma, there it is. Need to show you the numbers. There's four variables that we change. So I'm going to mess with those.
it's worth taking a note right now before you start messing with the chroma is when you go over to the camera controller you've got iris auto white balance and auto focus and i'm going to say we'll turn all those on so that we know that we have some known values And that's the precision camera controller. Okay, so now let's make Jane look better. <laughs> She's laughing. We'll give it, um, say, color. You can see how grainy that is. You see, I don't know if I'm in the picture or not. What am I seeing? One, two, three. Really grainy. That's better. It's better still. So you can take it way off where It's not too bad. That's not too bad. The numbers are somewhat flexible. It depends on how much light there is in the room, what the person's wearing. John, June, Jan, Jane deliberately wore green <laughs> today just to mess me up. <laughs> anyway, as I said, uh, the virtual background in Zoom just isn't good enough because we have to have a crisp, clear key. And I, as an example, um, sometimes when you move your chair, you've got great big blobs that just won't work on TV. So I'm going to change her background to that. And I can still see, oh, I keep getting the wrong button. Okay. See how she goes. <laughs> bye bye, Jane. <laughs> see, we, tr we adjust till we can get it the best we can and then that's better. I think John's backgrounds were black or brown. That's not bad. So how do we do? Let's take a look at the... What did it say for numbers? 150, 73, and 67. I bet it right now it's, it's, I'll let you see. Showing 125, 64, and 61. Well, let's try those, let's see if it gets better.
I'm going to say no. We can see I should give you the other one. This is a really good exercise because you're going to have to do this in real life. Because it's not easy. See, G Jane. <laughs> is wearing that green sweater and it's causing us a lot of trouble. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. Under the circumstances, this is the best we're going to be able to do with that sweater. But it's been a great example. Okay, so what else can we do? We can talk about transitions. A transition is what's next. This preview and program, the two screens. How about if I do this? Nope, I don't like it. There we go. That's better. So as we saw, we saw program. That's what's going out. That's what we're broadcasting. And preview is what's next. So then we can talk about transitions, and we have a number of different kinds. The easiest, and the one I rely on a lot, is just cut. All it does is go, it swaps one for the other. And then we also have auto, which has got a little bit of a smooth transition to it. And we also had the T-bar. Uh, we showed it, but I'll just know that it's there, which is, would be a wipe. And we can do that. Which is fun. And I'll move the camera a little bit. And you'll notice that uh, a lot, some people take offense to the, uh, the monitor, the screen on the podium. And we deliberately, and we're in 15, by the way, 14 and 16, the, the monitors on the other side. And it's always problematic when you're trying to show. Jane, you can go forward or backwards and get a different slide. Just arrow key. There you go. Generally, we like we try to get faculty to leave a little space. There you go, Jane. Leave a little space, and all we do is zoom out so that there's room for them to be in the shot. But it's, in 14, it's kind of hard. <laughs> Jane, yeah. So if we have the same background, remember we have duplicates all in each three bus. Class PC, um, reverse direction. We can take it out, which is really cool. And our friend Steve, told us how to do this. 
tasty. Okay. So, continuing to, what am I looking at? I've got duplicate studios in here. I've got my own studio and I've got the, the uh, control room studio, so it's interesting. Some terms, if you want to start talking about terms, uh, talk about key. I think of it as uh, the old-fashioned door key, you uh, know, and it's got a, <laughs> how do I do it? Around and then down. Okay, it, all, all a key is is a shape. It's a shape that you fill with video. And that's how we make uh, chroma keys or foregrounds and backgrounds. So there's another, some more buttons over here. We always have lots of buttons to work with, they're fun. Change the up stop a little bit. It's DSK one and two. We'll discuss these more when we get over to the uh, ATEM software. But if you see in the documentation, DSK one and two both override the program and program DSK two overrides everything. So let's, we'll get another camera and take a, another look at that. Okay. So right now I have DSK one on, and I don't know what's on two. It's just the, the end slate or the color bars. So and see. Because of that collar that Jane is wearing, and we, we are grateful for that, this key is miserable. Phil, can I ask a quick question? You may. Do you try to advise faculty on like helpful things to wear or not wear? Before Absolutely. They yep. Okay. Don't wear green. So Jane was just being stubborn. <laughs> no, no. I, I'm just I, kidding. <laughs> <laughs> well, Jane is stubborn, but <laughs> we, we still love her. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> so that's that's not bad now, but but it's given a, a cast. See, that's supposed to be white. Uh, paint, white trim and everything, but when we put Jane in it, it, gets, it goes a little green. So it's, it's, <laughs> it serves its purpose. Okay. We've done the best we can do there. Let's go over to the software. What I'm going to do is I'm going to log out and then we'll come back in. These Macs are terribly, terribly slow. Okay. So when you come in in the morning, 
hopefully it's already powered up because it takes forever to boot up. But to log in, the credentials are name is MST, and the enter password is UCMST. Is that all uppercase? No, nah, it's lowercase. Yes, yes, yes. Go away. And the eight the software as I mentioned is this. And ATEM is not a word, it's not an acronym, it's just something that they call it. It's like uh, Ford Fiesta or whatever you want. That's, that's all it is. So we'll double click. And you'll come up to a digital representation of the board itself. You could use it, but we don't because we use another screen, but just for fun, it's got the slider bar right here that you can move with the cursor. And just for giggles, let's go back to Jane. And I'm gonna make the slider bar go. We don't use that one. We've got so many screens in here, I don't know which one I'm supposed to look at. <laughs> okay, back to the Mac. We want, oh yeah, do a close up of that. So, the first icon is switcher, was where we are right now. The next one is media, and that's where we do our work. And it's usually filled in with a bunch of nice JPEGs. Here's what we call the end slate. And of course, there's an exam slate. Uh, class work in progress, you can read all that. Yeah, I wanted to mention also that uh, I really do encourage creativity. This is where you folks can make your own slates and you can use PowerPoint. Um, we prefer PowerPoint because everybody knows it and then we can get in and make alterations like for the date. We'll look at some slates as well. So we've got a couple of media player here's, players here. We've got one and two. I usually use one as the background. And then I use two as a lower third. Slates and lower thirds are just information. Have we got a slate here? Yes, we got a nice one that Laura made. We just take, okay, let's get the right camera. You just click on it and you can move it around and just pop it into whichever one you want. And then result, we go to another classroom and that's what's being broadcast. Now we also do lower thirds. So let's go back to our friend Jane. say we just came on air
and we'll want to, that's really dark, I'll try something different. We'll put up the number, the classroom number. We can do that with the DSK2. And I think there's some more information. There's Zoom student online. I think Laura made up these. And how about the actual instructor? It's all nice and professional. Bill, can I ask another question? You may. This is all so brand new to me, so it's a little overwhelming. But so the slates are different from the PowerPoints because the, the PowerPoint is what the instructor is making and it's showing, it's kind of like the instruction and it's showing behind them, but the slates are overlays that you guys are adding in on top of everything. We're that adding on top. Kind of accurate. Yep. Is, so would the instructor ever include the information that's on the slate in the slides and then you wouldn't need the slate or are they supposed to be separate? things they're generally split separate um, okay. the slate will identify the class it'll give it a date which generally we talk about uh, copyright and such um, some instructors that's that's not all inclusive some instructors will bring their own powerpoints and they'll want to use the first slide as a slate it we don't, we can accommodate it, but we're really, we have our slates running more than five minutes ahead of time because that's okay. when, that's when Kaltura starts. When I program, oh. when I program the calendar, uh, five minutes ahead of time, the slates, the uh, class has started to record and that'll run till five minutes after class stops. And okay. We'll, um, Thank you. I'm sorry. I'm starting to see the difference now. I appreciate that. Thank you. No, I, I really, it keeps me on track. I really appreciate the questions. I'm getting all wound up. Jeez. For what it's worth, if I may say. You may. Um, GSK stands for downstream. Downstream. Like downstream key, right? Yes. Yes. And it basically, if you consider the broadcast a stream, a river, it is like, it, it's downstream of your source. So anything that is on a GSK switch, well, a button, will override everything else you're showing. Yep. The other stuff will still be there behind, so to speak, but that's not what the uh, system will show on the screen. Okay, bear with me. I guess we can go look at the camera co controller. Give it some more stops. That's better. So as we look before, we've got auto iris, auto white balance, and auto focus. And auto focus is, is pretty good because we've got sit to stand podiums and they ask you to zoom down on some really fine text uh, and different structures are at different heights and so it'll automatically change even as they adjust it. We only use control A here. So camera one, camera two, and then camera three, which is the document camera. That's why it gets mixed terminologies. And we control them with this joystick here. 
So one and two, we can go pan, zoom, and tilt. Pan is, I don't know if you know the terminology, but pan is left, right, tilts up, down, and zoom, of course, is a tighter shot. So we only use one, two, three buttons here, making sure the autofocus and all the white balance and iris, and then this. That's all we use, unless, of course, you change the speeds, and they're really touchy. A little bit goes a long ways. The, the thing will slam from side to side if, if they're too far. So let's talk some more about slates. I'm going to try and go over to uh, another and share a screen. Hmm. Bear with me. It's not showing up. I guess it logged me out. Sorry, folks. Here we go. For some reason it timed out. Of course, media gallery. And then we look at some slates. When the students go to their media gallery, then they can find what class they want. And <clears throat> what we like to see is the title, the of the class and the and everything and particularly the date and we'll see there's one two three four all the same this one isn't that's what happens when you don't start your slates before the five minutes ahead of time now i this happened to be my class and i know that i had a very busy day that day but we would like to have them all look the same just for the students uh, convenience Uh, we can talk about design. Steve, what was uh, David Leach's? VUA 369. 369? That was one of them, yeah. Yeah, okay. I think I turned my volume down. Let's take a look. Steve's made these slates. Did you make these one or do you borrow them? These I borrowed because I came into the semester late. That's right. Anyway, um, folks have the option of uh, putting your own spin on it or you can, as Steve did, borrow for, for one.
and we can show you quickly how to do that. Let's see, let's see. I wanted to make the point that you can use your own pictures. Well, I have a question. Yes. Um, will we need Brightspace access to be able to do this? I gotta turn my volume up again. I'm sorry. Could you ask that again, please? Yes, will we need Brightspace access to do this? Yes. Okay. Do you, I thought you did have it. No, I do not have it yet. Rut roll. Okay, we got to get you in there. Thank you. I, I thought you did. No. Well, if you don't, you, you don't. Okay. Which camera are I on? This is just a random picture, but the format we use is 12 by nine, uh, the widescreen. This happens to be a 35 millimeter, typically it's just deep DSLR, but you know the bars to the side? We'd rather not do that. We want to fill up the whole screen. So what you, what you do is you import that into power, uh, Yes, PowerPoint and resize it. Has, has Dana, any of you folks done that? I'm sorry? I'm sorry. Um, have you used PowerPoint? Yes. Okay. Let's get me another camera here. I'm out of the shot. So the very simplest, you take blank presentation, get rid of this stuff. Oh, wrong keyboard. I got too many keyboards too. See that okay? My focus went off. Okay, I've got a blank presentation. I want to insert a picture. And I've got There, this is a good example. This is a four by three. To make it 12 by nine, you grab the ed, the cor diagonal corners and just fill it up. Now you've got, you save it as something. And I already have one actually, but that's, that's how you do it in PowerPoint. So oh, come on. Are you able to see that it was loading?
There it goes. You can use the whole picture and just put text box on it or whatever you feel like doing it. Um, I did import it into a PowerPoint. You could do this as well. It's just fooling around. It's, it's just give you an idea. So while we're here, I did want to make the point that media player one and two directly go to DSK one and two. Those two. But also, media player is also on one of is one of the three buses, and that's how you're able to make backgrounds. So, let's look at Jane again. I can change her background instantaneously. Color one, class PC. But the point here is that media one is how you do virtual backgrounds. So it's really quick and dirty, and I know it's an awful lot but hopefully you can review the, we'll edit the tape and then make it available and then you can get in here. Um, so the next thing to do is to talk about audio. How are we doing on time? Oh wow, getting close. All right, let's marshal through. Here's what enables the audio to go out. Close it down a little bit. There you go. It's counterintuitive, but red means it's not going out. You got to do that to send it out. So mute send is actually, that's what it means. It goes outside the house. Uh, mute mics is the overhead mics and the podium mics and also the little lavaliers. And the mute ceiling is the oh, this four or six odd microphones in the ceiling. Um, when instructors are playing YouTube videos, we can adjust the sound here. Um, it's it's not an analog pot. It's it's a digital representation. So you have to turn it a lot to get make a change. Generally, we run it all the way up high. Hey, Bill, you can't yes. see it. You can't okay, see what good. you're showing. Good. Sorry. Good. I'm glad. I'm not glad that you can't see it, but I'm glad you're telling me that you can't see it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I'll get my arm out of the way. See, I'm turning it, and it takes a lot of turning it to make it change. That's the point I'm making. Wait, no, we can't see that. We can, we're, it's, the camera is not on your, what you're showing. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. I thought I was in the shot, but if you saw what this control room looks like, it's, it's quite a setup. Anyway, let's try this again. Okay. See, I'm making a lot of turns to change that. Sometimes the YouTube videos are a low and you have to crank them up. But that's line source. 
line meaning comes from the computer. We can also change the room speakers. Sometimes uh, when we have Zoom into the classroom, it's really loud in there and we can change that. But if you do, you can always hit reset and you'll put it back to a known value. So let's go over to the audio cart. Give it some aperture. So I talked about audio having buses. Well, this is a pseudo bus. You see all the inputs. I've got all of them on right now, so let's take some off. Testing one, two. Testing one, two. Hello. It's a lot of buttons. Okay. Hello, hello, hello. Generally, I think one is the podium, and I'm six, maybe this lavalier that I'm wearing. You don't necessarily need to know that to do the job. It's just nice to know as part of the job. This is the view meter, and it's probably the most important indicator in the house. If, if this isn't running, you've got nothing, because uh, the, the video can be great, but if there's no audio with it, it's worthless. So when you go uh, broadcast, you've got to check that that's running. Okay. I know, it's a lot, folks. But generally, two weeks to a month, somebody will be sitting with another person uh, practicing and getting tips. We unfortunately, due to COVID, we can't do that. But the good news is uh, there is experienced technicians and myself on the floor when the new folks are here. So just holler, somebody will come running and by all means, get in and practice. Diane, do you know if you folks got keys yet? I think the rest of my department does. I don't. I requested it uh, several weeks ago, and I have not had any response yet. For okay, the maybe you need to follow up on that. Yep. Good, thanks. Okay, I said we would get to slates. If you look at Google Drive, this is where we keep our slates. Did I give you that? No. Okay. I did double click on the Google Drive and we got choices. And this, you can write this down. It's uh, hashtag, hashtag current courses. And you see the slates. And you're welcome to use these, uh, just reuse them or make some new ones. It's okay. Generally, we have a convention. We'll have, say, the course number BOA 230, then the instruct a name and then what semester it is. So it would be helpful if everybody could try and use that convention and store your slates in the course, uh, current courses. So just for giggles, let's see what we can find in here. Frank is pretty consistent. Oh, yeah. 
This is a nice one. Laura made it. So we'll see what we've Copyright down here, UMA and, and the instructor. When students come back, they can call the classroom over here, generally. We'll put that in. Um, of course, the course name, and the, uh, code and name. And then you would, because it's in PowerPoint, as I mentioned, we can actually, we can change these. Like, it doesn't have to be such and such, and it could just be the date. And just change it. But of course, you can't use it in the ATEM until you export it. You know, for the folks that haven't done, let's just try and get zoom in on that. export. And you'll see that down at the bottom. You've got to change that to JPEG. And then specify where it goes. desktop and then export Could have used a camera operator today. So there's your JEG pig. Pop it into one of these. I just did a drag and drop. And then put it into your DSK. So we have our slate running, the instructor showed up, we've adjusted the key, the chroma key. What I do, see if you can look at it. I, right now, Jane resides behind the slate. I can prove that by just a little cut back and forth. Now you see it, now you don't, okay. And then, I have the instructor's PC ready to go. So when, when I pop them on and they'll say, well, can we go to the PowerPoint now? Yes, it's all ready to go. Now, Guy Cousins often has an opening slate and we'll use that uh, on the initial thing after we take the, the uh, slate away. It depends. Everybody has a different way of doing it. You're welcome to try your own way. Um, ask questions and practice. That's what it takes. I've been doing this for 25 years and I still make mistakes. That's how you learn. So I guess that's about all I could do today. If I could just jump in just quickly. I just sent out an email to, I think everybody should get it. It's a picture of the general setup of the control room showing the preview monitor, the switcher, the Mac monitor, and the Mac. And they're all labeled. Good. And uh, the audio is to the left outside the picture. But as to what Bill just said, it's a fire hose of information, but it's 
the general job, what you have to do day to day, is pretty simple. All of you can learn it. If I can learn it, anybody, I can teach it. Anybody can do this. So it's not as tough as it looks. There's a lot of little details, but you guys will figure them out with no problem whatsoever. Thank you, Steve. That's very good. And we're always here. Uh, it's all hands. If somebody says help, everybody comes running. That's just the way we've always done it. So you've got support. I guess that's about all I could do today. Uh, I'm open for questions and comments. Feeling overwhelmed? Yes. <laughs> I like honesty. Okay. Uh, I'll edit this and make it available. And we're going to do it again on the 21st. Is that right, Helene? In January? Yeah, I think that's the date. Let me get my calendar. The notes in the other room. It's, it's the Monday before classes start. MST training, the 19th. The 19th, the day after Martin Luther King Day. That's right, we talked about that. Yeah, well, we'll go over this again, and also we'll talk about Zoom, because we didn't touch on Zoom today, and that's it's tricky under itself. So hope everybody could uh, get some confidence with this much of it, and then we'll add Zoom to it. Okay? Thank you, Bill. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for yes, dealing. Thank you. Okay. Bye bye. And also, thank if you. we could uh, have like switching one on one today, we had an overview of switching. Like, we, you covered a lot of different functions. Yeah. But I think it would be helpful to me, at least, to have switching one on one. Press this button. Press that button to start a class. Don't forget to press that button uh, to engage the microphone. Something like this, uh, probably s a little simpler. You know, uh, oh, step to, step. to 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 my old brain because uh, it's very difficult um, to s well all the details. Certainly, we can entertain that. Uh, the The issue, or what I'd like to make, this a, a lot of variables. It can be done so many different ways. So, for 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 instance, all the beginning switches, as far as I've heard, forget to engage the microphone, uh -huh. and then on the recording, uh, the recording, the whole recording is mute. So if if Steve or somebody would, or Jane would show us that button, don't forget that button <laughs> because uh, it will be a mute recording. It's not just the beginning switches, trust me. <laughs> <laughs> As I say, we, we still make mistakes. I mean, you, you get blind, blinded by it sometimes. It really is. It really is. The basic job really is quite simple. The first time you sit down in front of it, you'll be overwhelmed. A week later, you'll be an old hand at it. And it'll be a little harder for you because you're not going to be doing it constantly like we do. Yeah. But trust me, you can do this and you'll have another little tool under your belt and you'll, you'll have a great time. It can be very creative. Some of us need the belt first to hold the tool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, we you can come into the, the control room and we can maintain six six feet and I can look over your shoulder and just say, well, not that one, yeah. push the other button. Yeah. We, can, we can still those do something like that. Yeah, we might find that helpful after we read through all the materials and familiarize ourselves with the terminology. Yeah. yeah. Thank you for your time, Bill. A Thank picture you, is worth a thousand words, though. A picture is worth a thousand words. You got to sit down and do it. Yeah. Yeah. So I fully encourage you just to sit down and take that handout I gave you and just push buttons and see what happens. Uh-oh. Because <laughs> we can recover. <laughs> 
we can recover. Okay, I okay. guess thank I you. Break all the stuff down. All right. Thank you, Bill. Awesome. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you. Thanks, guys.